Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Storr here from Trust Your Supplier. With me is Michelle Armstrong. We uh, we just, uh, many of you hopefully came from the uh, the previous session with Dr. Uh, Epstein, and uh, what a great session that was. She really um, gave us some outstanding things to think about with regard to uh, supplier identity. And what we're going to talk about, if you heard uh, uh, the close of her session, she really talked about how Trust Your Supplier is, is beginning to implement some of that technical um, uh, structure to to build that digital wallet, that digital supplier identity. And we wanted to take a few minutes here today to talk about just what it is that we're doing here with regard to uh, to digital identity. So I'm going to pop up a, a couple of slides and we'll walk through them. Um, what is Trust Your Supplier? I just want to introduce our, our, our platform. It's a supplier lifecycle and identity management network. And it does a number of things around risk, supplier automation, uh, lifecycle monitoring, um, uh, automated workflows, visualizations. But today we're going to talk about that standard supplier identity, that single record sovereign, sovereignly owned by the supplier. Uh, as Eloise said, that we believe that's the future and that's where our focus is as it relates to that supplier identity. It's going to, that supplier identity is going to, to give those verified attributes that we talked about that guarantee the trust. It'll be resolvable across uh, any number of technical platforms and really create that single version of the truth. So that's, we're a supplier, we're a supplier lifecycle management platform, but at the heart of that platform, that lifecycle platform is identity. So when we talk about, and I won't spend a lot of time here, but when we talk about the evolution, Eloise spent a lot of time here. I'm going to fast forward to where we are today. Web portals, as um, as Eloise was saying, uh, have proliferated across many enterprises. Almost all organizations have some form of web portal today. Um, but what web portals are doing is creating a great deal of administrative burden and, and overhead and that portal fatigue that she described in, in the marketplace and in, 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 in the industry. Now, we're, we're now starting to move towards supplier networks, trust your suppliers, one of those networks where we're getting more reliable supplier information. Uh, we've got a dig uh, the ability to, to, uh, to discover suppliers digitally. Uh, we're getting third party verifications. We're starting to minimize some of that administration, but we're really not all the way there. And I think that's really what, what Eloise was talking about was, look, we're at the enterprise network really provides that, that kind of Apple pay paradigm um, around the supplier, but it doesn't really enable the supplier to own that information and, and more importantly, have that information be portable and resolvable on any medium. And so when we think about identity, right, and supplier identity, what does it mean? Supplier identity, they have, number one, the supplier has to agree that they want to share their identity. They have to be able to provide consent. There has to be an underlying infrastructure to make that trustworthy. We've built our platform on a blockchain. Um, we need to know that supplier is real. They have to have the, their identity has to be, be provable. They have, we have to know that they are who they say they are. Uh, they have, so, and it has to be verifiable. Uh, supplier attributes, they have to be able to be validated by reputable parties. Is there, they claim to have financial health. Well, who's validating that? How do we know? They claim to be sustainable. How do we know? So we'll, we'll provide veritable proof that that supplier is who they say they are and has the trusted identity components and attributes and characteristics that we're all going to use to vet that supplier. And then it need, those credentials need to be, uh, they need to be continually updated, continually monitored so that we can have a consistent use of that and be assured that that supplier not only is who they say they are when we, when we, when we integrate them into our, 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 our business, but as we maintain that life cycle, that relationship with that trading partner ongoing, that as things inevitably change, we understand that that change is reflected in their identity. So when we talk about the trust your supplier identity, we're building this platform on blockchain and this supplier identity will be, will be portable and resolvable amongst all of 
the kind of uh, uh, technical uh, and, and um, digital structures that the industry is using today, whether that be your, your legacy system, cloud solutions that a lot of organizations are moving to as it relates to their digital transformation. Uh, you want to be able to resolve it on their, on your mobile device. It has to go to your ERP. There's other ecosystems out there today that are in play that we want to be able to bring our supplier identities to and be able to transact up and down the supply chain. So this and this supplier identity needs to contain all of the information that we need uh, to uh, to understand how a supplier is going to do business with us. We understand we have to understand them firmographically. Uh, those questionnaires uh, and surveys that Eloise described earlier, uh, we have to be able to have that content. What is their their uh, uh, their anti-bribery policy look like? How do they deal with ethics and compliance? What's some policies they have around data rights? Uh, certifications, are they, cert are, they, are they diverse? Are they certified? What's, do they have a COI a, a, a regarding their insurance? And then that authoritative third-party content, how do we validate their financial health? How do we validate the fact that they, um, they have a cybersecurity uh, 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 certification? How do we know that? How are they maintaining that? Are they, you know, are they ISO compliant? Are, do they have a certification? Are they SOC compliant? Do they have a certification? Is it being kept up to date? All part of their identity. And so this is adherent to standards and rules that are going to be established or already are established so that when, when procurement organizations uh, and, and systems and processes consume this information, they know that there's trust associated with the information that they're looking at, that they're consuming, that they're processing without verification. It's a, ver it's a, it's a, it's a pre-verified record, and that's going to bring a ton of efficiency into the procurement world, both on the supplier side and on the buyer side. Now, from a TYS perspective, a lot of the, a lot of the work has already been done. Today, in Trust Your Supplier, if you are a subscriber to Trust Your Supplier, today you have, uh, a, a, if you are a supplier, you own your supplier record. You have a supplier record on blockchain that includes your firmographic, includes, includes those questionnaires, those certifications, and that authoritative third-party content that we've talked about already resident in the platform. The supplier today self-manages that content. That content doesn't come from any other source other than the supplier themselves. And suppliers can choose whom they want to share that identity with. If they want to share it with their customers, they can certainly do so. They can do so on our platform today. Uh, and because it's on blockchain, it'll, it's, it, it, it's building a bridge to the future where a future where information can be consumed. This identity be, can, can be consumed via microservices or APIs, which are conventional today, or via other blockchain networks that will inevitably surface. And we'll have a network to network communication that will enable that identity to be, to, to be, to be resolved across those network platforms. As we look to our roadmap, we look at really developing that true self-sovereign identity, what Eloise was really describing. It will be decentralized. It will be portable. The, the supplier will own it. They can take it and they can go to all of their customers and share it in manner which they, 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 they wish to share it. And that, that portable identity again, can work with any number of uh, 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 digital components within your ecosystem or within organizations that they do business with. It'll be persistent, so it'll be updated. It'll be constantly, uh, it, a const it'll be a constant perspective on what that supplier's identity tells us about them. Uh, they're changing, changing attributes as they go through the life cycle of the relationship with you and all of their other customers. It'll be cryptographically verifiable. So we'll know that it's trusted. We'll know that the information in there that was only supplied by the provider or by the supplier, and that that information has then been verified by organizations, uh, third-party organizations that are authoritative and that, um, and can, can, that we use today uh, to verify things like financial health, sustainability, diversity, and so on and so forth. And we're creating a, a, a decentralized identifier to embody all of that. We, we're going to call it the, the TYS did, the, the decentralized identifier. And this is going to give us that single trusted identity 
that's consumable by any kind of technology, whether it be a microservice or a blockchain or some other kind of coding that, that allows us to uh, develop a, an instant relationship with that supplier because we're consuming their identity in real time and then continuing to evaluate that identity in real time. So trust your supplier today. This is a sample. We didn't want to give you a full demo uh, just in the interest of time. But you can see a lot of what I talked about already exists. You can see that we've we've got the phonographic information already captured directly from the supplier. We take financial health information from the likes of Rapid Ratings or Dun & Bradstreet. Ecovadis provides us uh, the sustainability ratings. We've got a whole host of third parties in our market and what we call our marketplace or our app store that allow us to do things like understand uh, understand that financial risk, the cybersecurity risk, screening and sanctions, and other kinds of data validations.